Hello one and all, and welcome to another installment of Hymn of the Week. You know, when we record a Hymn of the Week session, we try and do it so that it can uh, stand the test of time, if you will. Just like our hymns stand the test of time, we want to have our comments be appropriate at any time. But as I think about the uh, passage of the week in preparation for this week's hymn, it seems to be so appropriate for the time that we find ourselves in right now. The passage in 2 Corinthians that I'll be reading in just a moment is one where Paul talks about the hardships that he's faced. Hardships that he faced are more than most of us experience in our lives. Many of us, I know, have had many difficult and very challenging things happen over the course of our lives. And right now we're in a season, a pandemic season, which we hope is ending soon but we're still in it, and it's been a hard two years for us. And so as we read this text today, we find ourselves hearing it with ears that are resonating with its truth for us in this moment. So let's read and feel along with Paul as he reflects on the hardships and also the power and presence of Christ and the encouragement that that brings to him in his life. So we go to 2 Corinthians 4 verses 7 to 18 and then we'll close with three important and powerful verses of prayer from the Apostle Paul over in Philippians chapter 1. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side but not crushed perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And now this beautiful prayer for us, we can take it for us, from Paul in Philippians 1, 9 to 11. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Amen. Amen. Our series theme has been Songs of Grace for Our Journey. Our hymn of the week, I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus. The author Francis R. Havergill, who lived from 1836 to 1879. The composer Ethelbert W. Bullinger. The certainty and sufficiency of God's grace inspires us to trust him for our journey. Frances Havergill expressed this in the title of her hymn, I am trusting the Lord Jesus, which anchored her faith for her journey. The central image of our passage of the week is expressed 
in verse 7 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. But we have this treasure in jars of clay. It was a common practice in Paul's day to store treasures such as money and jewelry in pottery. But like our bodies, these jars of clay are fragile, brittle, and easily shattered. Our bodies are important though, for they provide a temporary home for God's true treasures the treasure of the gospel of Jesus, whereby we receive eternal life, the treasure of the kingdom of God, which establishes the reign of Jesus within us, the treasure of the Holy Spirit, which, whereby we are empowered and renewed, the treasure of Christ's resurrection life within us, unfading and eternal. The gist of this image is this, to show that this unsurpassing power is from God, not from us. The image of the jars of clay and the treasure was well suited to the life of Francis Havergill. Though physically frail, she was strong in the Lord. Frances was born to her parents, William and Jane Havergill, December 14, 1836, in Astley, England. She grew up in a closely knit family, committed to the Lord and to the church. Her father was an Anglican clergyman and also an accomplished musician. Her mother was loving and caring but died when Francis was 11 years old. Francis was an attractive, cheerful, and unusually gifted child. She could read at age three. She began writing verse when she was seven. She had a special talent for languages and became proficient in Greek and Hebrew and fluent in German and French. She was also a devout student of the Bible able to recite the Gospels, the Epistles, Revelation, the Psalms, Isaiah, and the Minor Prophets. She was a talented musician as well and a prolific writer of hymns. Though believing from her childhood, she had a conversion experience when she was nine. This experience confirmed her faith in Jesus. She retained a childlike faith throughout her life. Frances prayed over every line she wrote. To quote, writing is like praying for me, she once said, for I never seemed to write even a verse all by myself. In 1874, when Frances was 37, she became severely ill with typhoid fever and was housebound for eight months. It was shortly after this that she wrote the hymn that became her favorite of all the hymns she wrote, I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus. At the end of her life, when she was again severely ill, it was reported that she faintly sang this hymn shortly before she passed away. She died January 3rd, 1879, while vacationing in Wales. She was 42 years of age. The hymn consists of four verses, sung without a refrain. Verse one, I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus, trusting only thee, Trusting thee for full salvation, great and free. Verse 2, I am trusting thee to guide me. Thou alone shalt lead every day and every hour, supplying all my need. Verse 3, I am trusting thee for power. Thine 
can never fail. Words which thou thyself shalt give me must prevail. Verse 4, I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus, never let me fall. I am trusting thee for power and for all. Listen to our hymn of the week as presented by our musicians, Calvin Dick, Stan Gubiotti, accompanied by Betty Suderman at the piano. I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus, by Francis Habergill, our hymn of the week. <laughs> 